Hi, I'm Pat and welcome back to the channel. Today I have my BMW i8 up on quick jacks so that I can remove the wheel arches as well as some under trays so I can inspect what's behind those panels. The BMW i8 contains some under trays to make sure that it has great aerodynamics as well as the normal wheel arches that a typical car has so that it protects those areas from moisture, from rocks and other items, but it also provides some sound deadening. But what this does is it covers up some areas of the car that I want to check. I've owned the car over a year now and I just got done doing a ceramic coat on the car so I figured why not just go ahead and do some more checking and cleaning and that requires me to remove some of the wheel arches as well as some of the trays underneath the car. So let's take a closer look. I had already cleaned the car and that's why you see the rotor is uh, as rusty as it is right now. It hasn't been driven. But I'm going to go ahead and remove all these little bolts that are around here. I'm going to take the wheel arches out in the back and in the front and that'll give me access to see what's going on in the center of the car. But I also need to get underneath the car and take one of the panels off under there. Let's take a closer look. So as we slide underneath the front of the car, this is the panel that's up here that covers the electronic motors. So all the electronic pieces in the motors, uh, I want to take a look at that. I want to take a look at the axles. Um, but as I'm looking under here, I'm noticing a few things that stand out. So for example, there's some white residue here. Now I daily drive the car and it's very possible that I pick something up on the road, but I'm kind of curious Maybe there's a leak. So that's something I definitely want to check out. And I also noticed another thing. I'm missing a piece of hardware. Ah, there it is. Right there. So I already ordered a replacement screw. Actually, I picked up five of them. You never know when you need more. So this fell out on its own. And the one on the other side was a little loose as well. So it's good that I got under here and checked this out. I certainly don't want this hanging down lower than it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and start removing these screws and take a closer look to see what's underneath the I-8. But first I'm going to start removing the wheel arches and have the same exact screws to see what we got going on from this side of the car and then I can remove the under panel. One interesting thing to note is that after we removed all the bolts, there's three expanding plastic rivets here, and there's really no way to pry these out. They actually have a centerpiece, so I'm just going to push the centerpiece through um, and see if I can. Of course, the centerpieces are falling down through here, so I can hopefully retain those. And if not, I have to purchase more. So I've gone ahead and pushed them through, and now I can pull the expanding rivets out of this plastic piece. So now it's a lot easier in order to get this wheel arch out. And of course there's debris in here, leaves, rocks, you name it. So it's probably a good idea if we pulled these out for some cleaning. And now that we have the rear section of the wheel arch removed, we can go ahead and remove the front section. We got to go through the same process, and it looks like there's also a clip right here. Now, this is the tube that goes up to the battery, so this allows the battery to vent. So I'm just going to give that uh, a quick pull. So now that that's out of there, I can go ahead and start removing all the uh, little bolts. Yeah, that, that's kind of dirty too. I'm, I'm really surprised at how many leaves and things get on the other side of these. Definitely worth taking the time to clean everything out. So while we have everything off, let's just take a quick tour here. Um, down here we have our duct that comes from the front bumper in order to cool the brakes. Uh, we got our headlight right here. Uh, there's our 12 volt battery. And of course all our suspension parts here. 
and everything looks like it's in good shape. I don't see anything that looks weird or out of place or fluids dripping where they shouldn't be, things like that. So pretty happy with the results so far. Of course, we could even see the inside of our hood up here. <laughs> How about that? Very cool. And of course, here is where our pull string is inside the door jam. So back in there, if for some reason you can't pull your charger out of here, you would <laughs> open the door and pull on a little plug that's right back here that pulls this yellow string, which will then release the uh, charging port to allow you to pull your charging cable out. And that cable is tucked way up in there. Uh, I do know somebody from the forum who had this break. And of course now it's going to be difficult to fix it because uh, I think it would require taking the fender off to get in there. So anyway, now that everything is disassembled here, my next step is going to be to go underneath the car and of course take off the panel that sits underneath the front of the I-8. In off camera, I went ahead and removed the wheel arches or the sections of the wheel arch that are on the right front. And I noticed a few things. So I found an extra piece of the car. <laughs> yeah, this was laying down here. So where the wheel arch tucks up underneath the car, it was laying there. So it could be pretty much, you know, anything from here on down. So I'll have to go hunt for a home for that. And also this piece right here, this belongs right there. Of course it's broken and when I took the bolt out it just fell down so it either broke before or during my ownership i'm not sure so i'm just going to get some jb weld and uh, we'll get this piece of uh, plastic glued back on here it's not really doing much of anything since this piece it comes through the uh, the wheel arch so that's not that big of a deal i could fix that and i also noticed this if i put my light right up against this tank, this is the tank for the windshield washer fluid. Um, it's almost all the way full of water. There is no um, windshield washer fluid in here, only water. And when I bought the car, of course, that's how it was. I never used the windshield washers. So I've been driving around in the winter time and below freezing weather, potentially uh, causing problems for this. So I'm going to need to drain this. And probably what I'll do is just pull the hose off. This is the hose that runs up to the jets. If I can pull this hose off, I can then you know, get the water to come out this way and, uh, and drain this and refill it the right way with actual windshield washer fluid. Other than that, everything else looks good. Of course, we have our coolant bottle right here and uh, that's in, in good shape. And of course, the other thing, and people are probably gonna notice this, the <laughs> The deterioration of the shock boot covers is downright horrible. Uh, these deteriorate on every I-8, so I'm working on trying to fabricate some way of replacing these without having to take the shocks off the car. So that'll be coming up. But in the meantime, I'm going to get to uh, the bottom of the car next so that I can start working on taking a look at what's underneath. My next step in the process is going to be to remove about a thousand little bolts, <laughs> give or take, right? Um, so I'm going to start around the outside and then slowly take the ones off the inside. I think that would be the, uh, the best bet. I got all these off correctly. This should be the last one, I believe. Let's see. And I'm just going to feed it back be able to just pull this straight back now. Whew. This thing's loaded with crap. Oh. Wow. Alright, let's uh let's pull this out of the way. <laughs> There's a lot of junk under here. Alright. Let's look how dirty and crummy this is. Wow. <laughs> I can't believe how much stuff gets stuck up under here. Interesting. Oh, looks like a cigarette butt, some leaves, some sand or dirt. 
So I decided I'm going to go ahead and take the stiffening plate off of here so I can examine what's going on underneath it, just to make sure everything looks good. And in the process, I learned that these are T50 Torx bolts, and they're not really torqued down too tight, but I went ahead and broke them all loose, and now I can run them out with the drill. Thing I decided to lower that too. There's a bunch of debris on there. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. See what everything looks like under here. And looks like there's a little bit of oil leaking from the fill plug. The transmission here up front. So if we take a look, we could see you know, right there. There's oil. And that oil should not be there. There should be nothing on the bottom of this. And granted, it is filled with <laughs> it's filled with oil, but I'll shine a little light here. Just so you can see that yeah, there's a little bit of oil there. And it looks like a spray of oil. And I don't know if that's because it was just that particular mount, or if there's an axle seal. I don't see anything with the axle, and the axle goes in right here. So I'm looking to see if there's any type of, I don't see any, any drips or leaks or anything. It's just a bunch of spray right there. And sometimes that could be oil from other things. I'm not noticing any, uh, oil sprayed from anything else i mean right there that's our electronic motor so that uh that's what powers the beast <laughs> and of course there's our transmission that's connected to it and that axle outputs over here which here's your half that goes to that one wheel and of course there's the other half you know that goes to the other wheel so Everything looks good in there. I don't notice any other problems. There's a bunch of wiring right here, but and some debris, of course. We got some leaves that gotta come out, some dirt. So I'll just vacuum that up, but I'm not noticing anything else. It's just that little bit of oil right there. And while I'm under here, I'm just gonna keep going. It looks like these are the same bolts that were... Huh, that bolt was hit. Interesting. So I won't be able to take that one out. I may have to drill it out. These bolts I could take out, but not this one. Eh, that's no fun. Maybe I can find a bit that seems big enough to fit over that. All right, that's our next mission. <laughs> Find a bit that'll fit over a squashed bolt. Yep, the original won't fit, so let's set this one aside. And we'll try a different one. We'll just keep going down the line until we find one that fits over it. <laughs> if not, we'll put some type of pliers on it. I did order replacements of these. In case something went wrong. Ah, that seems to fit a little bit. Let's try that. Yeah. All right, one broken bolt out of the way. Yeah, that thing is not looking good. 
it's definitely uh, it's definitely seen better days. And like I said, I have more replacements on the way in case I needed them. It was smart to have replacements. So just going to go ahead and start taking the other bolts out of here. Cool. All right. So that's the front of the car. Just pick the camera up and I'm moving back and we can see uh, this is our battery pack right here and coolant lines on each side. So coolant there. One's hot and one's cold, right? So one side of the car takes the heat back from the engine in the back and sends and sends cool water back to it. Pretty cool. Hmm. So there's some type of cross member here that goes underneath the battery. And I would assume, yeah. So there's still material on each side and it's more sound deadening than anything else. So if I shine a light in there, I could see that's how we would get our cross member off if we needed to remove that to take the battery out. Interesting. Very, very interesting. There's tons of debris under me because of all the crap that came out from this thing. <laughs> yep. Very cool. Well, another day has gone by and I finished buttoning up the bottom of the i8. I torqued everything to spec and now everything is done on the bottom of the car. All the cleaning was very, very uh, necessary. And now I'm going to start to take a look at the wheel wells. Of course, I did mention, you know, this is broken. I need, I want to drain this. But generally, things are just very, very cruddy. <laughs> and I did a quick test on the other side of the car and I got to show you what the results were. So here on this side of the car, I wanted to test some things out. Now, I had picked up this Pro Strength degreaser, and I had used that on my truck when I needed to do some transmission service. I wanted to clean everything up. And it smelled exactly like scrubbing bubbles. <laughs> so I decided to take the scrubbing bubbles and just spray them everywhere, and then wipe them off with a paper towel. Literally, this is so clean. It does such a great job on the aluminum. I just decided to spray it everywhere. Um, brake calipers, everywhere. And the neat thing about it is it, it dries without leaving any type of residue behind. So you can just wipe it up with a paper towel. I also have a squirt bottle of water and that works as well. So what I'm gonna do is on the front right side, I'm gonna go ahead and start by cleaning it up using the scrubbing bubbles and we'll just be blown away by the results. I guarantee it. So one last look. This is exactly what things look like when they are clean and we'll go back over to the dirty side. So here's the dirty side so you can actually see how cruddy this really is. Now I'm going to prevent myself from spraying this into the electronics. I, I obviously these things are covered for a reason and I don't want to spray this on all that kind of stuff. But I know that I could spray it back here. I could get in here with it. You know, there are areas down in there where I can get with it. You know, obviously I can take care of the brakes and the calipers and everything and even get some down in here. I, it, it's okay for me to do that, but I'm just gonna avoid the electronic parts for now. So take a look at how well this stuff works. So the way this bathroom grime fighting scrubbing bubbles thing works is you spray it on, it goes on foamy, and then you let it get to the point where the foam goes away and then you could wipe it off with a paper towel. So I might not do everything on the first pass, but you know I'll definitely hit up some of the obvious areas that you can see here on the camera so you can see how well it works.
and I'm actually trying to get the aluminum. I really don't care about cleaning the rotor surface, but it's going to be clean. <laughs> sit for a couple minutes. I'm going to go ahead and start to wipe off all the areas that the bubbles are currently on. I'll start with the rotor even though I really don't have to <laughs> I don't have to clean the rotor and already it's quite disgusting uh, how much dirt and grime is actually on <laughs> on the rotor and then I will just wipe the top half of the aluminum here and you can see just how dirty it is and now how clean it is this is a very very good aluminum brightener wow <laughs> it's already a dirty paper towel time for a new one and I'm just using you know a little bit of force I'm not really pressing very hard I'm just trying to make sure I get everything off of here that I can get off of here and uh, I'm just impressed by the results. Wow. So there we go. We got half of it, half of it clean already. You know, from here on up, it looks terrific. From here on down, it looks horrible. It has definitely done a great job at brightening this aluminum. And so there is the face of our rotor. So now I'm just going to go ahead and start to clean the the brake caliper with this and see how it turns out. Wow. See already this this half of the brake caliper is so clean compared to that half. It's unreal. So I'm just going to keep wiping. And yeah, it's starting to feel a little dry. But I'm trying to get as much dirt off as I can. Now let's give it a quick spritz of water. We'll get any of that residue off of here that the scrubbing bubbles broke up on the brake caliper. Yeah, that's looking fantastic. Okay, so this aluminum here is really dirty, but I'm going to go ahead and wipe it off. Scrubbing bubbles definitely did a great job taking all that dirt off of there. Now this is obviously a little bit drier. I'm just going to squirt some water onto this paper towel. This is fantastic. I got to tell you, I'm really impressed with this. Well, I made some significant progress. I'm actually very happy with the job. So I went ahead and disconnected this quick disconnect here on the bottom of the reservoir tank and water came out and <laughs> uh, went in the car, you know, actually turned the uh, accessory ignition on and, and continued to work the windshield washers until this was completely empty and then refilled it up with the correct windshield washer fluid. So that's good to go. Also got some JB Weld here and put it on the uh, plastic piece here. So now this is intact. So when I go ahead and bolt the wheel arch back onto the car, it'll have a appropriate place to connect to. So that's good to go. Everything is really clean. And I decided to go ahead and just give this a wipe down with alcohol and put some ceramic coat on it since I've already done the ceramic coating on the car. So link in the description if you haven't seen that yet. But now the, uh, <laughs> now the brake booster is ceramic coated. So that should be easier to clean. And overall, I, I'm very happy with the results of the scrubbing bubbles. They did a great job at keeping everything clean. So the next step is to go to the other side of the car and complete the front there. I know I'm probably not going to get around to you, the back wheels because I got some things to do in a couple days. So I'll let this ceramic coating cure on here and that'll be good to go because it needs about 24 hours before you can actually drive it in the rain, things like that. So good. Everything turned out really, really well. The scrubbing bubbles and, you know, just giving it, sometimes giving things a quick squirt of water, that all worked very, very well. 
And this is a good documentation for also anything that we do not know what look it looks like inside the wheel wells of the BMW i8. Of course, have video from both sides. So I appreciate you following along. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and ring that bell for notifications as I'll be posting BMW i8 content often. Thanks for watching and happy motoring.